You tried to take me for idiot. <laughs> Customer service is the milkshake that brings the boys to the yard. Hey you guys, it's your girl Jenna and welcome back to another video or another moment in time where we get to discuss customer service related topics so that we can improve our customer service, our professionalism, and obtain or encourage better habits in the workplace. I think customer service applies in everything you do. It, it even, look, it even applies to your friendships and relationships. It's just that better side of you that comes through for that other person. My pants make a lot of noise because they're plastic. If you saw my, my previous video, which is the first video of this channel, you would have seen uh, me touch upon why it's so hard for employees uh, working for Zada or similar major stores to give the best customer service. I was able to maintain my friendliness, my professionalism, and give the best customer service that I knew how to at the time, regardless of challenges, whether that be challenges with customers, challenges with colleagues, challenges with the workload. So I wanted to make a whole new video for you guys, just touching on that. I'm going to drop some of my customer service principles, uh, which are also what helped me during my time. I'm Zada, forgive, I have a lot of these flies in my house. So if you see them flying around, just, I've, I've come to just neglect them. They're customers that don't know when to leave. They're not paying any customer tax for being here. They're just rude. If you are new in the work field or you're rusty because we have been in quarantine for God knows how long now, and you're finding it challenging to get back into that space where you have to deal with customers face to face and have that human connection, then I hope my channel and these videos will help you with that. So I'll start off with this. First and foremost, please remember when you are at work, you must be professional. Professionalism above everything, above your pettiness, above your emotions, above the argument you had with your significant other at home, above the argument that you had with your colleague in the stock room or in the back somewhere. Professionalism over the interaction you had with a ridiculous customer five minutes ago. That's five minutes ago. Whenever you come across a new customer, it's a whole new you know, ball field. They do not deserve to get the worst of you. They deserve to get the best of you because that's what's going to make them spend money. And we know that companies need customers because that's where this comes from. And without this, the company will, okay? And so customer service is the milkshake that brings the boys to the yard when it comes to a successful business. So professionalism at all times. And if all else fails, remember that you need a job because you've got bills to pay. And you probably have children to feed and if you don't you have something to pay for you got makeup you want to buy clothes you want to buy you got a vacation you want to go on you got a car you want to get trying to save up for a mortgage whatever the case may be you're at that job because you need that job for that very lucky few that work because they want to and not because they need to just be nice. My second point would be product knowledge. Now, product knowledge is so important for so many reasons, using Zada as an example. Someone will always come in and say, I saw this on someone and I want it. You need to have some type of product knowledge. You need to know, is that item in the area that I'm working in? Is that item from Zada Basics? If it's from Basics, then I can try to find it in my area. But if it's from Zada Woman, then I cannot. You need to be able to differentiate between the pieces and the cutout of the pieces, the pricing of the pieces, to then see in what area of the store the product would be in. Anywhere you work, you need to have product knowledge. Because first of all, if you do not know what you're talking about, someone will tech you for idiot. <laughs> All my Jamaicans out there, I'm so sorry if I messed that up, but that is one of my favorite sayings, you know? Jamaicans always say, you tried to take me for idiot. Someone will take you for idiot. 
If you do not know what you're talking about, you will lose your credibility, you will start stuttering, you will be lost, the customer will straight away feel that they can disrespect you because they do not feel confident in your abilities. And so it is so important to know your stuff. In order for you to have product knowledge, you need to be devoted to what you're doing. I mean, obviously you don't have to eat, sleep, and breathe what you're doing, but have an idea of what it is that you do at your job and what you deal with. If you work in a restaurant, have an idea of the kind of uh, menu that you have and the products that you have in your, in your menu. If someone is going to your job who has allergy to nuts, and be careful with the kind of brownie you wanna sell them because if that brownie has nuts in there, walnuts or whatever, you know, you might cause a deadly allergic reaction, you know? So you need to have product knowledge. My third is emotional intelligence. Um, I think emotional intelligence is so much easier said than done because we're not always emotionally intelligent. I think in some, in, in certain um, situations, I'm completely oblivious to everything around me. But working in retail or working in hospitality, I have learned to read a customer before they even get to me. Because you know, you can see what someone's doing around you. If I, and then I'm going to use that as an example. You're standing folding clothes on a table and you see someone rummaging through jeans. You can automatically assume that they're looking for a pair of jeans. So before they go and mess up all the jeans you just spent 20 minutes folding on that table, approach them and ask them, I have a feeling that you were looking for a pair of jeans. Can I help you? Is it these jeans that you're looking for? What size are you after? Let me get it for you. First of all, it shows that you care. The customer feels valued because you took your time to go help them. Little do they know is that you don't want them to mess up what you just finished working hard on, okay? But they feel that you are so interested in what, what's going on with them that you are willing to stop what you're doing to go find their pair of jeans. No, boo-boo, I just don't want you to mess up my work. <laughs> but, you know, there you have an idea okay so that's what that customer might need let me anticipate their needs before they even open their mouth it just shows that next level of service and it does wonders i appreciate good customer service and so i give good customer service because i know i would like that in return the next point communication please be clear be straightforward manage expectations you know do not leave a customer in the dark basically. Well, it's okay to not know where something is or what something is. I don't know where that is, but if you hang around this area, I'll try to figure out how to get that for you. Or a lot of times, if someone asks me to go check something in the stock room, um, I look, because obviously working for Zada and I'm sure many other uh, stores, because nowadays technology is so advanced, boy, <laughs> that you barely got to work yourself. <laughs> you look through your system and you can see what you have in stock, what you don't have in stock. If the stock room is saying there's one or two of these items, you say, I think we might still have. Okay, because in case you get there, the item is not where it's supposed to be. Because if, if this is five or more, then you're guaranteed to find it. But if this is two or less, sometimes, depending on the organization of the stock room, you might just not find it. So manage your customer's expectations. If you tell your customer, we might, we might not, they won't be disappointed if you say you don't have it. But if you like, oh, we got it. And then you get upstairs, you, you can't find it. Then you walk back downstairs or wherever. You walk back to the customer empty-handed. It just creates that, you know, disappointment. And you, you don't want to be the person that disappoints someone, do you? No one likes a disappointer. <laughs> so manage expectations beforehand. And communication is so important, especially when you're being challenged. If you have a difficult customer, apply what I always do. You know, kill them with kindness. Yo, I swear. That I should I should tattoo that on my body. If you worked with me before, and I worked in, in a couple of countries, so <laughs> maybe you did work with me before, you will know that I am the nicest person ever. Look, people will approach me armed with their attitudes and you know their rebelliousness and whatever they come armed with because that's an armor that people wear when they go to certain stores like Zada because it is expected that your, your sales assistant will be rude. And when they get to me, they start off, you know, very, you know, 
standoffish and attitude -y and, da -da -da. and then when they speak to me, my kindness just breaks through that armor and then it shows who they really are. If someone is being particularly rude, you do not have to lower yourself to their level to speak to them. So in communication, you know, know how to talk to people because at the end of the day, you're just going to interact with that person for a couple of minutes. What's the point of it in working up so much energy to be rude? Unless you like being rude on a regular day basis, then do you, boo. But I mean, for me, it takes a lot. I, I do not like anything messing with my energy, with my chakras. So I like to be in a good mood because it just, it makes me just flow during the day. Within communication, and I guess this ties in to emotional intelligence. Please know how to be patient. I understand you have a workload on top of you. You have a limited time frame to do your work, but you have to be patient with your customer. And you will get a lot of indecisive customers. You will get a lot of customers that don't mm, 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 mm. know how to expedite the situation without losing that professional touch to your service. If you see that the customer is trying to figure out what they're doing, just say, hey, I'll be just at this table right here. I'm just folding a couple of things. But whenever you're ready, just call me over. My name is DJ. Whenever you're ready, I'll be ready to help you. You're still doing your work. You're still folding your things. And whenever the customer's ready to go, you guys go. This can be applied for hospitality. I, I did this a lot as well in the hospitality um, uh, work. I would have tables to clean. I, I worked in a restaurant. I have tables to clean, tables to set. I have things to, to take to the back, things to bring to the front. Then I have customers that are sitting there taking hours to decide what they want to eat. And I'm just like, hey, um, look, there's no rush. You guys just got here. I want you to enjoy yourselves. So take your time, look at the menu. I'm just over here cleaning out these tables. Whenever you're ready, my name is DJ, just give me a shout and I'll be right at your table. Simple, you communicate it, you let them know. Look, I'm right here, whenever you need me, I'm available, but you're still doing what you need to be doing. So you're being attentive to them and still managing to get on with your workload. Okay, <laughs> look at you learning from Jenna. You're welcome. <laughs> well, finally, we have friendliness. Remember, you win more bees with honey than with, vin with vinegar. I mean, not that you want bees in your life, because... Anyway, look, being sweet is the way forward. You would not like to go. Think about what you would like when you go somewhere to get some type of assistance. First of all, you need a client. Um, and if you were the client, you would want someone to be nice to you. But also, clients could go and complain about you. Yo, and do you really want to complain on your record? Like, mm. you know, at the end of the day, you are at work. If you don't like what you do, switch it. You have choices. I know it's scary. I know it's scary to say, you know, well, I don't like that, let me get up and go to another job because what if you don't find another job straight away and you got bills to pay? But if you are so unhappy in your workplace that you can't even manage to smile at a customer, baby, it is time to get up and get on, okay? I'm laughing, but it's it's really serious. I have experienced horrible customer service in, in a couple of stores. I think one time, only one time that I can think of, I actually had to complain. Like the service was so bad, I actually had to complain. But what I also do often is compliment um, sales associates, sales assistants, whatever you call yourselves, at stores because I know what it is like to be <laughs> the employee. So as a customer, when I've gone to stores and received amazing customer service, I make it a point to compliment it either directly to the staff or, or which I, I like to do even more, is to go to someone that's hired, so like a supervisor or a manager, and compliment that member of staff. Because um, I, I don't think many employees get that. And especially if you're new and you're trying and all of this is new to you, it feels good to be reassured. And I think that's really important. So next time you go into a store and you get amazing service, go ahead and compliment. Compliment the sales assistant or compliment the manager and you will feel amazing for it. The, the sales assistant will feel amazing for you. Bless their day. And it's just 
beautiful energy that's just being spread around the world and and i think the world needs it <laughs> more now than ever so you guys those are my five tips on how to provide or how i gave a great customer service working at a very challenging zada in rotterdam holland i hope you take something from that if you want to add anything please feel free to do so in the comment section below in the comment section down below thank you so much my name is jenna do not forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video it helps with the engagement and it helps with the growth of this channel um, with our community and i will see well we will see each other in the next video take care see you soon